Hi guys, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to the vlog. It's your girl Tanisha Chantez and today is October day 14. Um, hope y'all enjoyed yesterday's vlog. We had a really good time at Trader Joe's. I could do that a million times over because when I say I done already been munching on some of that stuff, uh, if y'all look at my shorts, y'all let's see kind of what I've tried or whatever. Um, that'd be too good. My, my kids are loving the pancakes. Like, they, they're picky, so. And I like how fluffy they are. I didn't get a chance to get the egg sandwiches just because two of them was a little pricey for me at least the pancakes come multiple and they'll fill you up with just eating one i didn't just i i figured i could make my own egg sandwich for that price so that's why i didn't get it but yeah it ended up being really good a really good trip um like it's something to get used to because i cook everything um usually stuff from scratch and stuff like that so stuff that you just pretty much pop in the oven or in the uh microwave or air fryer i gotta get used to that because usually we just do chicken tenders and fries like that not nothing else like i be cooking so kind of because this is so easy it's they side on it but man when i tell you i had that none last night babe And that butter chicken. Listen. She ought to get out the camera. Because she got to get her head done today. Okay, not too much. Okay, get out the camera. Duplicate. Okay, hold on. Hey, um, y'all. Yeah, baby, yesterday. let me tell you. Let me tell you. That butter chicken. Because, see, I had butter chicken for the first time on a cruise. And that's probably why I, um, uh, baby, some stay in my eye. No, no matter how much I wash my face. Anyway, um, I had it on a cruise first. Royal Caribbean, to be exact. And if you looked at our Royal Caribbean video, no offense to y'all cruisers, but yeah, I, I, I'm big on food and it just was not getting what it needs to give. Mm. So I had a bad experience with butter chicken, right? I'm like, mm-mm, I don't want that. Nope. I could just visualize me eating it on a cruise. I'm so glad I just listened to the people, the TikTokers, because when I say... It was the perfect amount of spice. I'm not a spicy food girl. Oh. It was the perfect amount of spice. Flavor, like I cooked it myself. The non, I was a little scared of because it, it had like little seasoned pieces in it and stuff like that. Baby, let me tell you. Too good. Too good. I was so surprised, y'all. So, so, so surprised. It felt, I felt guilty because it was so easy to cook and so quick. Baby, I towed it up. I tore it up. It was too good. My stomach paid for it a little bit, but I already was having issues anyways. Y'all know something stay wrong with me, child. But, uh, what the heck? But, yeah. When I say... Too good. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know what they did or how they did it. And then for us to come out of there spending less than $150 on all the stuff we got. Drinks, milk, food, snacks, look. I like that's what I be looking for. Like quick stuff while I'm working that I can eat for lunch and stuff. Baby, if we would have we been at, Matter of fact, prime example, we went to Walmart on my lunch today. $60. I got three cans of, uh, I got meatloaf sauce. I got tomato sauce. I got two science boards. I got, see, I can't even think, two mini made juices. Um, white grape stuff. One little, uh, Welch's white grape. Did I get any food? Oh, the little Texas Roll House rolls that are we gonna try tonight. A look, the mini Velveeta block, not the big one, the mini one, sixty dollars. Sixty dollars. 
Ah, ah, ah. It's just, it make you look at stuff different. It make you look at stuff different. I I really do, like, I'll be back pretty much. I'm going to make that drive every single time. I think when I put it in my GPS, it said 45 minutes. 40 minutes or so 42 minutes. It was traffic, but we didn't even get stuck in the traffic. That's the crazy part. But it was traffic that day. And on the way back, it was traffic. But it was a lot going on off of the freeway. Buildings was burning and it was a lot going on. But when I tell you I go back every time and I make that drive, because why not? Then I looked at my gas tank. Baby, it didn't move. When I was there and came back, it was still in the same spot. I said, oh, I could do this anytime. Baby, it was worth the trip. Truly, truly, if you have not ever experienced. Now, I'm weird. This is this is my problem, and I'm trying to step out of my comfort zone, so I'm proud of myself for even going. I'm a packaging girly. If you don't know what I mean, like, the glitz and glamour of packaging gets me. So, like, if... if I see some bread, right? Speaking of bread, I forgot bread today. Jesus. If I see some bread and it's in an ugly package, they got this ugly picture on it. It could be the best bread in the world. And somebody could have told me, girl, it's so good. I'll be side on it like, why they got it in this packaging? Why is the packaging this color? I'm that picky when it comes to packaging. And I didn't realize it until recently. When I went to Trader Joe's the first time, if you like watch that vlog, the first thing I said was, this is my second trip, but it's my first time buying something. When the first time we went, I walked in Trader Joe's and I looked at that stuff and the pictures on the stuff. I said, no, nah, I'm good. Don't mind me, baby. Just, <laughs> don't even worry about my hair because I got to take it out. Things hurt. I had to take it down, but I'm not touching mine because I'm about to do hers. So, they can wait. I got to show y'all the stuff, too. I forgot. But, um, let me tell you why well, I got a little pause for the cows. I went in there the first time, and I walked back out. We walked around. We checked out stuff, but I was picking up the package. I'm like, why the food looks like this on the picture? Why is every package brown and orange and, and black? And I can honestly say, do not judge a book by its cover. That's why they say it. Because it was nothing like, like even the uh, butter chicken. The picture, I don't know. It gives dull to me. I don't know. I'm weird. It gives dull to me on the packaging, right? I'm like, why couldn't they make it a white background with some stuff on the table? Like, if you're going to have a picture of the plate and stuff, like, make it, you know, like I want to eat it. I don't know. I'm weird. But that's why I was like, this stuff look next. Excuse me. I made up my mind. I was like, mm-mm. This stuff look nasty. I don't want it. I don't want nothing to do with it. No. T yesterday, going back. And, and really just, like, looking at the stuff. Well, okay, so let me go back. Here's what made me go. TikTok. And I don't be on TikTok. But I, something came up in my mind. I was like, what if I tried Trader Joe's again? And I typed in Trader Joe's. I want to say I typed in best food at Trader Joe's. Something like that. You know, that opens up a can of worms. You could be scrolling for hours. So, of course, I looked at my people um, to kind of, you know, yeah. And um, they were all saying the same stuff, the same stuff. You got to try this, you got to try that, the orange chicken, the rice. The, the. I was like, I'm going to go. And you know what else caught my attention? The prices. Because some of them would say, oh, it just costs this much. It just costs that much. Now, here's what I will say. Thank goodness I did it for the pancakes, but I wish I would have did it for everything. So then it probably would have been a little bit over, but still nowhere near regular shopping prices. I would say like if you're getting orange chicken and you got a big family, you might want to double that. 
you might want to get two packs. If you're getting the rice, you might want to get two, pra two packs. I didn't want to do that, and I don't know how this stuff tastes. So far, so good. So now I know next time, okay, I need two of that. I need pancakes. I need four because I got two, and baby, they going through them. They never eat breakfast every day, but they going through these pancakes. And I've had one so far to myself. So they let me know, okay, when I go get the pancakes, I got to get four of them. Because it's only coming like, well, how many was in that thing, look how Like six? Yeah, so it's not a lot. So I was like, okay, I know I didn't more that. Definitely got to get the butter chicken for me. That's going to be my um, lunch for myself while I'm working. Um, yeah, but let me tell you. I shouldn't have judged that place because it was genuinely really good. Okay. It was really good. So, whew, excuse me. So, basically, I, um, uh, yeah, I suggest anybody that's trying to save because stuff is like $2.99, $129, $3.99. What was the most expensive thing we got there? The most expensive thing, and I don't even think I ended up getting that chili sauce. I wanted to try that chili sauce. That chili sauce is about $7 by itself. And it, the joys they be. So I think um, I probably tried next time. I didn't get it this time. But the most expensive thing we got might have been that wine. The peach bellini. Everything else was under five dollars. No lie. Everything else was under five dollars. Um we'll say under seven dollars. We'll say under seven because I don't know. I can't remember the price on the orange chicken and stuff. Cause those bags are a little bit bigger. But let me tell you. If you haven't been to Trader Joe's. And you like me and you're biased and you're Target and you're Walmart and you're Sam's Club and Costco. Go to Trader Joe's. Try it at least once. Take your little $80 budget. Because that was my budget. I went over it because, of course, I went over it. Um, but my budget was $80. So I'm not spending more than $80 in here because I don't know what none of this stuff tastes like. Go try it. Go try it. It's, it's. I feel like, this is what I feel like. <laughs> I feel like it's perfect for college. And it's probably why I was created, because it makes sense. It's perfect for college students. I feel like it's a lazy man's place to be. Not man, literally, man as in human. Um, if you are not a cooker, if you are a nurse, if you are a doctor... If you are a full-time, two-job working person that just don't, you don't know how to cook, <sighs> don't like to cook, Trader Joe's is the place for you. Everything is seasoned. Everything is sauced. I'll, I'll let, now, I will say they do sell regular meat, you know, cheese and eggs. But I noticed the prices on that was significantly higher than the regular store. Why? Because that's not what they're there for. I feel like Trader Joe's is not really there for you to be cooking from scratch. All this stuff is ready, pre-made. Get the stuff, go heat it up. That's what it is. So if you are struggling right now, uh, shoot, even with depression, you can't cook. Me, I went through this moment where I'm like, I'm not cooking. And that's not me. So it would have been perfect at that time. Had I known. But yeah, if you struggling with that, this is definitely something you want to go visit. Even if it's a little bit away from you, because it's not they not everywhere. Um that's how tired I am. Yeah, I ain't get no sleep. I feel so bad last night, but it's all right. Um it's it's really the place for people that, that just really don't have the time and you know, you want to have a decent lunch, you want to have a decent dinner, but you can't cook it and you don't want to spend no money. Baby, go there. You will be so happy. And this vlog was not supposed to be about Trader Joe's, but I just had to tell y'all because what? So, I'm doing the kids' hair tonight. We are making meatloaf macaroni casserole. 
first time making it, not the first time making it, if that makes sense. I done made meatloaf a million times. I done made mac and cheese a million times. Now we're just about to combine them. I'm excited about it because we need something different in this house. And I just feel like, yeah, this is perfect. This is for me. I'm going to do it my way. You can ride along with me. Hope you, hopefully you enjoy. I will see y'all when I get off. Hey, what's up, y'all? We are back my office looking not sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do but I'm back and off of work about to get to it so what we're about to do is start cooking now I'm gonna bring y'all with me it'll be a different view because I'm actually moving some stuff around in the kitchen so yeah it looks crazy in there right now but it's for the benefit of making this easier for me but um uh, let me show y'all what we started on. Okay, y'all. So, we have mac and cheese already ready. Well, not mac and cheese. Macaroni noodles already ready. Um, I'm about to get ready to season them. And then, I'm about to get the cheese started. That's the first step. So, if I didn't already say we're making meatloaf mac and cheese casserole. Something different, something new. Usually I make both of these dishes, but separate, of course. Um, but we're just about to rock out and do it together. Like I said, I'm gonna start by seasoning. I'm using this pot again because, yeah, I'm using that pot again. So I do season my macaroni noodles prior to doing anything. I season them. My regular old seasonings, child. If you watch me long enough, you'll, you'll kind of get that I use pretty much the same stuff often. I do try to mix it up some, though. Like today, I think I'm going to just keep it simple. So, we got garlic salt. We got onion powder, garlic powder, Cajun all seasoning. We got Uncle Chris's gourmet steak seasoning. The reason I use steak seasoning is because I don't use salt and pepper. Steak seasoning has both in it, so any kind of them. But, yeah, so I'm gonna do that. This is really good. It's with the Fiesta brand. I don't know if y'all had this for y'all. Go back. If you do, run it, don't walk. So, season it. Literally, I'm seasoning it like I do my meat. Hot, yeah. Onion, and garlic powder, and the Cajun, and it, it's not spicy. By the time you put the cheese and stuff, definitely not spicy. Then I want some color, so I'm gonna do some paprika. for a little bit because I still got to make the meatloaf. And so what I'm going to do is mix this seasoning in and then I'm about to be back. I'll give y'all a close up on me making the. Okay, y'all. Forgive me. I don't even know where I left off. But pretty much season it, stir it up, mix it or whatever. And I'm going to use the same um, what is it called, child? Same skill, same pot that I just boiled them in to make my cheese. Ain't no point in messing up no dishes, child. Okay, y'all. So, I'm going to try to make this quick. We don't want to run out of storage again. So, basically, what we're going to do, we're going to put some butter. Uh, probably half a stick. I had some left, so this will pretty much be half a stick of butter. And let that melt down a little bit. Or a lot of bit. Let that completely melt down. The reason I'm putting it in here is because I usually will put it in my mac and cheese, but I'm not just popping it in a pan this time. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it to my cheese mix so that it can just be incorporated and I can pour over my um, noodles when I get ready to do my noodles. So I probably should have did the meat first, but I just feel like this is, yeah. I'm doing it my way. 
anyway so yeah let's let this melt down and i'll be back with y'all to add the rest of my ingredients all right so we have heavy whipping cream you can use milk it's not a big deal um you can definitely use milk please don't panic heavy whipping cream um and then i'm gonna add my Velveeta. this is the small box and i did half of this small box i don't use a lot of it because it's it's a saltier cheese and i'm already putting a good amount of cheese with the macaroni too and on top so i try to kind of even it out plus i'm putting cheese in here so like more cheese and i know everybody does it different this is my way um, so I'm going to split it up a little bit more while it's in the pot. You know, that'd be the last thing to melt for some reason. That, uh, dog on Velveeta. Then we're going to add sour cream. What do they call it? A dollar. Just a dollar. That's it. Um, sour cream will pretty much tell you if you're cooking your, uh, cheese too long, too. If y'all guess what's gonna happen, it's gonna start clumping up and stuff. So, uh, so we got sour cream, keep stirring. That's the key, keep stirring. Um, I did not walk away from my pot while I'm making my cheese. And if I do for two seconds to do something like rinse the spoon. Okay, and then. I use cream of mushroom. Yes, cream of mushroom. I don't know what to tell you. So, probably a spoon and a half of cream of mushroom. I'm gonna say this, put it in something and save that. Cause yeah, we don't waste food. Um, and then, So then we're gonna stir it in. So I can already tell that it's gonna be too thick. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of my heavy whipping cream. And then I'm gonna have my baby bring me the milk. Bring me the milk. Now that we got the look we want, this is before we add our shredded cheese. So what I'm gonna use is sharp cheddar cheese and then a four cheese Mexican, because it has different ones in there. I'm add some milk. It's not even a cup, it's like three quarts of milk. I don't, I'm not a measurement girl, so bear with me, guys. Kinda just play by my eyes. So now, we're melting down, but we still got our Velveeta chunks, of course. But we're gonna go ahead and start adding our cheese, our other cheese. So that's the sharp cheddar. Okay. This is the four cheese Mexican. I also do the Italian five cheese as well as an option. We don't have any more, so I'm using what I got. Okay. So. This is where it gets tricky because it will be lumpy, clumpy, and it will almost look like it is not gonna be. It will, trust me, it will. So, I fell in love with this Parmesan ranch, y'all. I've been using it on almost everything. I'm gonna add a hint of it to my cheese. Cause it's just, I don't know. Something about it, they do that. So, it's just a spray game. consistency that we're looking for. And I'll be back once I get it to that. Like I said, we're trying to preserve storage, y'all, unfortunately. So we about almost there. I'm taking it off the eye. Like I told y'all, I gotta go back to my meat. So I don't want it to get to where I can pour. It's pretty good now, but it could cook down some more. So I'm gonna take it off of the eye and I'm about to switch over to show y'all how I make my meatloaf. So, one sec. So hey y'all, we back. So y'all know how it is when you work and you forget to take meat out and all that good stuff. So part of these chunks is a little froze, but we gonna we gonna we gonna make it through it. Um, so I'm doing 
Like seasoning as usual. Um, I'm gonna do garlic salt. And I'm not doing as much because I have meatloaf seasoning as well. Paprika. Uh, okay, go give me an egg. Eggs. But this is diced bell pepper and onions. I know it don't look like it because it's frozen. I freeze all my bell peppers as soon as I purchase them. And onions. Um, as soon as I purchase them, I cut them up. We usually get them from Sam, so it's a lot to cut, but it's worth it, I promise. Because I don't even remember last time we went to Sam's, and these are from when we went to Sam's, and they work just fine, and they stay good and froze. Um, so just like you would freeze your fruit to make it last, same concept. So we got, I'm not ready for it yet. Okay. Meatloaf seasoning in a pack, McCormick, of course. Um, and then I'm about to get my breadcrumbs, which is a little different. Mine's a different, but I'll show y'all in a second. So we got the Progresso breadcrumbs. These are plain. I usually get either Italian or the Parmesan ones, but again, working, I'm trying to balance it out. Um, let's go ahead and get this kind of mixed in here. Give me a pair of gloves out of there. I'm gonna kind of get it in before I put the rest of my stuff. They're gonna mix with my hands, but for now, just to get it not sitting on top like that. Go ahead and um, crack my egg in there, please. All right, we got our egg in there. Now, our breadcrumbs. Mm -mm. You done done your hip. Now go away. Get ready to get that hair done. All right, so now that we got that, I use Hunt's meatloaf sauce. The best silver, I don't know. I add it to my meat. I know most people don't put their sauce to this on the top. I'm, um, that ain't what I do. So I do add it to my meat. And I put it on top when it's almost done. Today is going to be different. I'm just adding it to the meat. So I'll be adding more. Usually it's like about a half a can that I would add to the meat. And, um... Yeah, so today it'll be almost a full can because I'm not doing a topper. Remember, the mac and cheese is going to be on top. So then we just mix. And I squeeze as I mix to get it good into that ground beef. Because if you know meatloaf, you know that it could be spots that don't have nothing in it. And we don't play like that over here. So when you're done with this, your meat should be good and juicy. Um gives that consistency that it is well incorporated um not necessarily a mush feel but just like a i don't know i can't explain it just make sure you mix it well like you see when i flip it some spots still don't have nothing on it we don't want that so you just keep mixing and squeezing um if you like more humps and clumps though you just want to kind of mix like this i like a smooth meatloaf um and I don't like dry pieces. I don't, I can, yeah, I don't like that. So this is what I do. But yeah, that's why I did the kind of cheese first because this is simple. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with making meatloaf, but I promise you adding the sauce with it and putting it on top makes a huge difference with it not being dry. Um, adding your own seasoning prior to using the meatloaf seasoning, it just takes the slack off and so yeah, before we do the pan, we back to the cheese. So now we want it to get smooth. We want it to get like real smooth. So now I'm about to cook this on back down. Probably add a tad bit more milk to get it to activate. And then um, I'm going to, instead of pouring it over top, I'm going to put my noodles in here with it so that I can mix. Um, and control the amount of noodles because I think it's too many noodles. Add a tad bit of milk, like I said, to just get the get it going. Normally, you would have cooked it all the way through, no stops. 
and poured it over your, your noodles in a pan and ready to go. I do do like sliced up butter across um, if I was doing a regular mac and cheese in a pan, but remember, we, we, we're not doing regular this time, so. Really thick, so we're gonna let this get good and warm so that we can um, add our mac and cheese. Noodles, add noodles to the thing. Sorry, I know I'm making some noise, but hey. Y'all be wanting to see me cook, child. This is what we do. Okay, I'll be back when this smooths out. All right, child. So it's still kind of thick, but I'm gonna go ahead and start adding noodles so I can gauge how much I'm using. I'll make a little bit of a mess. I don't wanna tip them over in there. Noodles can be reused, child. But I don't know what I'm going to use these for. Let's stir. See where we're at. Definitely can put more. I don't need as much because remember, this is not a huge pan of mac and cheese. A little bit more. All right, bring me the milk. Okay, we're gonna add some milk to thin this out, but it's pretty much ready to be put in the oven. Uh, top of cheese, so we're gonna put it to the side because I don't feel comfortable just putting it with no meatloaf food that's not cooked. I don't know if that's how people do it, I ain't doing it. So I'm about to put my meatloaf in the oven, uh, let it cook down, and then I will be adding this to the top of it. Turn that off, move it back, clean up my mess, and I'll be back. Okay, so here's how the meatloaf looks. So I left my room for my mac and cheese. I have two of these. These are all good size, but wasn't long enough, so I did two. Um, and I'm about to add it to the oven and let it cook. Like I said, I don't feel comfortable with the... I just don't. I'm sorry. So I'm going to let these cook a little bit. Come back. Add my mac and cheese. Top it with cheese. Let both of them cook together. The juices mix up. You know. And we'll be back to show you the finished product. Okay, y'all. So I'm topping it off. Of course, it's shrunk because it's not a loaf. It's flat. Topping it off with the mac and cheese. This one is already uh, topped off. And then I'm going to add shredded cheese to it. We're just going to spread this out. I didn't put as much meat in this one. We're going to put this. We're going to spread it out. And I'm going to top it with shredded cheese. Hold on. Okay, so let's top this off. Probably going to have to get some more. Maybe not. So that should be good. the oven on 400 that was so I could really cook this meat and then I'm about to put this back up in there and let it cook I'll show y'all the after we done for the night baby because who tired is me hey guys we're good and sizzled up I'm gonna do a spoonful in a minute but these are in the oven now cooking we're gonna see how they are I heard they were nowhere near like Texas Row House, but hey, we needed some rolls with this. So let me show y'all what we looking like, child. 